Alright, so Apple just released two brand new iPads at their September event. We've got the new iPad 9 for $329 and the fully redesigned iPad Mini 6 for $499. And on the surface, it seems like the iPad 9 is just receiving an extremely small spec update, but in reality, the value of Apple's basic iPad just went through the roof, which I'm gonna explain in this video. But then again, for $170 more, you can get the new iPad Mini 6 with the brand new redesign that looks much more modern and future proof. So what I'm gonna do in this video is go through all of the new changes on each iPad and explain why they're such a big deal. And then I'm gonna compare the feature differences and give you guys some practical advice on which iPad to buy. So without further ado, let me first get into the main changes with the iPad 9. This year, it's getting the A13 Bionic chip, which is from the iPhone 11, giving it an 18% boost in terms of single core performance, an over 20% boost in multi-core, and a much larger 37% boost in metal graphics performance. On top of that, the A13 features a better image signal processor, which should improve camera quality. However, it's still sticking to the same 3 gigs of RAM as it had last year. As far as the display, it now supports True Tone, which basically adjusts the color temperature of the display to match your environment, just like all of the other iPads have done for a while. But the most shocking new feature is the upgraded selfie camera, which now features a 12 megapixel ultra wide directly from the new M1 iPad Pro which also supports the new center stage feature for FaceTime calls. This is a huge deal because the previous iPad 8 had a terrible 1.2 megapixel camera, which sucks for everything from photos to FaceTime calls, so a 10X improvement is awesome. And finally, the last big feature is that Apple doubled the base storage to 64 gigs, and they're now offering a new 256 gigabyte storage option. Now, while it seems like all of this is a small upgrade, this is actually pretty huge because Apple didn't bump up the price tag at all. It still starts at $329 and you get all of these new features. And if you don't believe me when I say this is huge, let me remind you that last year's iPad 8 only had one upgrade from the previous iPad 7. It got an upgraded A12 chip. That's all. So all of those upgrades to the iPad 9 are honestly much more than I expected since Apple fixed multiple issues that I had with the old iPad even though they didn't quite give it the laminated display that I really wanted it to get. Now with that said, let's move on to the changes with the iPad mini 6. But first, I wanna point something very important out to you guys. Until now, the design of the mini literally has never changed since the very first model in 2012 almost a full decade ago. So when I tell you that the new Mini 6's redesign is a huge deal, it is, because not only has Apple redesigned it, but they fixed basically every complaint we've had with the old model. In fact, they made the new iPad Mini 6 so good that it now cannibalizes the iPad Air 4 in multiple ways, so please do not buy the iPad Air until it gets updated again. But getting back to what's changed with the Mini 6, it obviously gets the new flat-sided redesign from the Air and the Pro, which includes the removal of the home button and a new rounded corner display. This change alone is huge because it's gonna make people feel safe about buying the Mini 6 as a long-term purchase since this design won't change for many years. On top of that, another game-changing new feature is the switch to the USB-C port, which makes it much more useful and modern. And because Apple ditched the lightning port, they also had to make the mini support the new Apple Pencil 2 with the wireless charging magnetic cutout on the side, which is 100 times better than the old charging solution. But one of the most important new features for me is the fact that Apple finally gave its speakers on both the top and the bottom for true stereo sound, which completely changes your experience when gaming or watching videos. Just like the Air and the Pro, it now features built-in magnets, so it supports Apple's super thin magnetic smart folio, which also covers the front and allows you to quickly stand it up. On top of that, the new Mini also gets the same new 12 megapixel ultra-wide selfie camera that comes on the M1 iPad Pro and the iPad 9, which replaces the old 7 megapixel 
megapixel selfie cam, which couldn't even record video at 60 FPS. And as far as the rear camera, it's been upgraded to a 12 megapixel sensor with a faster f1.8 aperture, which leads to much better camera quality. And this time, it actually comes with a flash compared to no flash on the old model. And for video recording, it can finally shoot 4K at up to 60 FPS compared to 1080p at only 30 FPS on the old model. And as far as the wireless specs, it features upgraded Wi-Fi 6 support and you can now finally get a 5G model but unfortunately, it doesn't support millimeter wave for those who have it in their area. And finally, the last major upgrade is the brand new A15 Bionic chip, and thankfully, it's actually the five core GPU version from the iPhone 13 Pro models. Benchmarks for the iPad mini 6 have already leaked, and it looks like it scored around 1600 points in terms of single core, and around 4600 points for multi-core, which seems to be a downclocked version of the A15 that's going into the iPhone 13 models. But if we compare the leaked scores to the A12 chip from the last iPad mini, the new one is now 43% faster in terms of single core performance, and a pretty nice 72% improvement in terms of multi-core. But the biggest upgrade we see is in the metal graphics performance, which matters the most for things like gaming and productivity work. The leaked benchmarks for the Mini 6 show a metal graphics score of around 13,700, a seriously massive two and a half times more graphics performance than the old Mini 5. So when I say that this new update to the Mini 6 is the biggest that we've ever seen, I mean it. Now with all that said, before I get into my practical advice for which one to buy, let me quickly list off the main differences between both the new iPad 9 and the new iPad Mini 6. The Mini is quite a bit smaller, which you can see in this comparison image on Apple's website, actually making it perfect for kids, especially since it comes in more fun colors like pink, purple, and starlight. The Mini obviously also gets a much better design, especially on the display, so it's gonna feel modern for years. The Mini has the better A15 chip compared to A13. It has a better 12 megapixel rear camera with flash compared to eight without flash. It gets the much better USB-C port, and it gets the second gen Apple Pencil, which is more convenient to store and charge. On top of that, the display on the Mini is actually much better, with a higher 326 PPI resolution, better color support with DCI-P3 wide color gamut, and the display has an anti-reflective coating while also being fully laminated, so it doesn't have a gap between the display and the glass, making it feel more solid and giving it deeper blacks. And of course, the Mini 6 features true stereo speakers on the top and the bottom, while the iPad 9 only has stereo speakers on one side, which don't sound nearly as good. And in terms of the wireless specs, the Mini has Wi-Fi 6 instead of regular Wi-Fi 5, and it has Bluetooth 5.0 instead of Bluetooth 4.2. But with all that said, the iPad 9 actually has a couple of features that the Mini does not. The iPad 9 is now the only iPad that still comes with a headphone jack, while the Mini 6 has scrapped it this year. The iPad 9 also comes with Apple's smart connector, which allows it to support amazing keyboards like Logitech's Combo Touch, which features a full keyboard and a trackpad that actually works very well, turning it into a laptop replacement. But the Mini 6 unfortunately doesn't because it's too small to have a keyboard attached to it. So with all of that out of the way, let me finish off with my practical advice on which one you should buy. If you're the type of person who's been looking at Android tablets for yourself or your kids, but you're now considering an iPad, the iPad 9 is the one to buy because it's the cheapest one at only $329, and it now gets double the storage and all of the new features for a reliable experience for many years to come. Or if you just want an iPad for things like playing games and watching videos while not spending that much cash, and you don't really care about the design, the iPad 9 is for you because it comes with the A13 chip, which is more than fast enough for most games and apps. Or if you just wanna have a portable laptop replacement in combination with Logitech's Combo Touch keyboard case, this is the cheapest way to do it. Now moving on to the iPad mini 
36, this is the one to buy if you really care about future proofing for the next few years and you don't mind spending an extra 170 bucks to get the updated design and the much better display. This one is definitely gonna be more convenient to hold in your hands while on the couch or anywhere else because of the smaller size, making it an absolute dream for gaming because of the stereo speakers and the blazing fast A15 chip that's gonna handle any app or game without issue for many, many years. And when I say future proof, I mean it because it comes with modern specs and features like second gen Apple Pencil support, USB-C, and updated wireless specs, while the iPad 9 is basically using all of the old technology and it obviously looks ancient. So in my opinion, unless you really need that smart connector for keyboard support, I would honestly spend the extra $170 on the new iPad mini 6, because I think there's a pretty good chance that Apple will totally redesign the iPad 9 next year for the 10th anniversary model, and you're gonna be stuck with the old design that nobody wants anymore. But then again, if future proving isn't that big of a deal for you, and you just want a new iPad without spending half a grand on it, the new iPad 9 is definitely a killer value for everything that you get. So hopefully this video helped you make a decision, and if it did, go ahead and click the circle above to subscribe for more videos like this one, and check out our links below for these iPads and the best keyboards down in the description below. But if you're still confused on which iPad to buy, comment your thoughts below and it will help you make a decision. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.